Alright guys, it's that time again, once again, it's time for another product review, and if you're just coming from my GameCube controller review, the new one that Nintendo did put out with the Smash, the new Smash, well it's not really a new Smash logo, but you know what I'm talking about, this is the new style of emblem that they chose to put on this controller. If you are coming from that video, well, I have some good news, if you have not been following any of my update posts following that video. We got our hands on the brand new Power A wireless GameCube style pro controller that is not even out yet, okay? This comes out sometime around closer to the end of November, <laughs> but just in time for the upcoming Super Smash Bros. Ultimate on the Nintendo Switch. So we're gonna open this sucker up, we're gonna unbox it, we're gonna review it, we're gonna play test it, and we're gonna get... Okay, so for unstandard boxing purposes, of course, we're going to go through and rip this guy open. And of course, lucky for me, I have nails because I haven't actually had time to cut mine. So funny story about this controller that I will tell you guys as I'm unflapping this. Uh, oh, it does come with AA batteries, so in case you were wondering, <laughs> we got some AA batteries. I actually discovered this controller right after I had finished uploading the review on the last controller that I did. And funny enough, I was like, what the hell? How did I not know about this? How did no one even tell me about it in the first place? So I was very shocked and surprised that there is actually such a legitimate controller out there that look literally took the style of the GameCube controller. Controller, the classic one that we all know and love that we've been playing with for many many years and this is an officially licensed product from Nintendo themselves you have the sticker of the approval right there up here in the corner and it's made by a company known as power a which before this I had I never heard of before so of course this comes in nice red packaging controllers right in here obviously but we're gonna get through all of the fun stuff Okay, and this is the uh, directions here. So this just basically gives you a little bit of a rundown on how to properly um, set up the controller to the Nintendo Switch, which we will be switching to in like just a second. You want to put this screen on the Switch for you guys. All right, so as you guys can see, I am right now for the time being using my Hori Pad. Um, that's normally what I use to play Pokemon Tournament. I have it already plugged in, so that's why I'm pretty much navigating with right now. I just wanted to show you guys that's what I'm going to be using at first. That's what's plugged in right now. And now we're actually going to go in to the actual controller itself that is nicely packed up in this plastic here and the field test oh wow okay so this is a completely new joystick kind of sound i've actually never felt or heard a gamecube controller have this kind of joystick sound to it but i mean it is it is what it is, it's smooth. So I'm used to having a really small Z button. So just as a small comparison for you guys to see, this is the Z button in comparison to the new R button because they have the ZR and ZL in place. So this is now an R button, which you know we all know as a Z button if we're just gonna be playing this with Smash Brothers. And then of course on the other side, the GameCube never had another button, but this one does. And these buttons are much of a big difference. They're bigger and I like how they feel. They're very silent and they're quiet. You can't even, you can, you can only hear the nub. Yeah, man, like that's that's a silent button right there. The triggers have some springs in them. I feel it. I feel it. Okay, that's cool. C stick is doesn't sound doesn't sound the same. Yeah, definitely. Oh wow, that definitely sounds very drastically different and the d-pad of course is probably one of the other big upgrades i would say to the controller is that if you look at the original gamecube controller the classic gamecube controller right here the d-pad is hella small and they have not made it any bigger or adjusted it in any way shape or form with any of the uh iterations that came afterwards this is actually hugely different look my whole thumb i'm not gonna lie guys Yes, no, this is a better, way better D-pad. The D-pads on the original game controllers felt very stiff to me, and since they were so small, it just added to their stiffness. But with this, this being that there is um, a wider spread with just the overall, the layout of this D directional pad right here. Oh yeah, 
it's a lot better, can't confirm. Also, another tidbit, they Power A did not put me up to saying anything that I'm saying right now. This is just me speaking my mind freely, simply because I'm gonna try and give you guys the most accurate review I possibly can right now. And so far, I am pretty impressed. Now, it does feel really light in comparison to like you know a controller that's got a bunch of parts in it obviously you never have to charge these but however one thing i will say that i am kind of alarmed about is the simple fact that it takes batteries oh my god now some of you guys might find that as a bad thing however i really don't see that as a terrible thing because if you remember back in the day those wonderful wave birds that we used to play with and maybe some of you are lucky enough to still have yours in good enough condition to use used the same kind of double a batteries and they're so nice enough that the controllers actually do come packaged with them now if you're not looking for the wireless version of this you can actually get the same exact control but in a wired USB version. All right, so without looking at any kind of instructions or anything like that, I'm gonna actually just test how easy it is to simply connect, then sync up the controller to the switch <clears throat> without any kind of prior knowledge. So this is the most in-depth review you can possibly find out there on YouTube or however way you're watching this right now. So the batteries are in. Let's go switch over to the switch now. Okay, so presumably, I would assume that we would want to go to the controller setup menu. So I'm going to go over now. Of course, I'm using my wired USB um, controller, as you guys can see there in the bottom left corner. Um, now I'm going to go to find controllers, and then I'm going to... Let's see what happens if I hit the sync button up at the top. Okay, so far nothing. All right, so let's hold down the home button. Okay, so I pushed. I I just simply pushed the home button now, and it's uh, it's it's flickering right now. Okay, so I think after you hit the home button, you're gonna have to hit the sync button. So I hit the home button, and now I'm holding that sync button, or I held it for a little bit. Let me see if I click it. See if anything happens. No, nothing happened yet so far. All right, that's fine. This is a learning process. Press L and R to make controllers vibrate. All right, trying that out as well. Okay, now so far, I'm not getting any kind of signal or anything of the like. Okay, actually, hold on. Let me try that one more time because I was pressing the sh the the triggers, which is I'm I'm that's um, an honest mistake because I am used to these being the original L and R buttons. However, this is a ZL now and the ZR. This is actually the new uh, R and L buttons right here. So let's try that again. Okay, still, still not finding anything right now okay well the lights are definitely flashing up as you guys can see so the batteries are placed right if you guys are wondering okay so we're gonna just hold the sync button supposed to automatically connect okay well let's try going back to the change grip or, or oh i'm stupid let's go to pairing new controllers you can pair oh this is for joy con all right so i went to the top option Okay, cool. So all I did was I simply just held the sync button while I was in this mode right here. And yep, it's reacting now. I didn't get a vibrate, so I don't not I don't think there's any vibration functions on this, but I'm gonna read all the specifics off for you towards the end of the video if I haven't already figured it out on my own. Just so that you guys can get a more realistic feel as to how simple and easy it is to um, set it up. Now, I was just kind of just playing trial and error here, just seeing if I could find the controller that way by going to find controllers, because you would think that, you know, I'm trying to find the controller here. But change grip order, you just go to change grip order, and bam, you'll be able to do it. Okay, so we're going to go back out now. Now, we can try it on any game, actually. Um, I guess we could just do something simple like Nintendo, play some Super Mario Brothers. And I'll use the D-pad just, just to see how it feels, because, you know, Know, again this d-pad is one of the newer additions to the game itself i definitely want to want to just see how it feels so far i mean i'm only holding forward <laughs> so so far so good i actually never tried playing mario before with a game controller this is kind of 
uh, weird anyway. So the closest thing to a smash that we have currently right now, because I do have this controller early, and again, like I said in the beginning of this video, this controller is not out yet. It comes out towards the end of this month. Smash is coming out December 7th. So closest thing we got is Brawl Out. So let's just go give Brawl Out a go. Now, as far as the feeling and the texture of this controller, it's not exactly how the original classic one feels, but it's closer to it. it feels a lot better than the the new nintendo branded um official gamecube controllers that they make nowadays unfortunately they're not making them in the same style as this uh, or as these these cl the classic the ogs if you will this one is kind of in the middle it's not like a complete matte finish but it's more along the smoother sides like you would find in like you know a regular game controller I haven't played this game in so long. All right, so wave dashing in this game, for those that don't know, all you have to do is hit, um, all you have to do is hit Y and the shoulder button, which in this case would be Z R. Now that it's not just the R button anymore. Okay. It's, it's very responsive. I will say that. Right now, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to do lighthouse. And light hops seem to come out pretty clean. Oof, the CPU, come on. Oh yeah, it's very it's very responsive. Full hops. Oh god. Alright, I should probably not die this last for that. <laughs> nice. Alright, cool. So from what I can tell, I mean, with this game uh, that we tested it on, like, I feel like in order to truly test out this controller, obviously, another follow-up will have to be done. So it will definitely be a part two to this review, just so that way we can feel out how this feels with Smash. But I can already tell you guys, it's probably not even going to be necessary. It's probably going to be one of those things where you guys will catch me on stream playing with this, especially on Smash Ultimate. And you'll see how naturally this feels. I mean, this feels great. And the fact that you can use this on all Switch games is perfect. This makes it a completely usable controller because if you didn't know, well, now you know. The Wii U, when you got the GameCube adapter and you used that GameCube adapter with your GameCube controller so that you could play Smash, and if you thought that you could play Mario Kart with it, well, guess friggin' what? You couldn't. And in this, this time around, Powerade decided to make a controller that would oversee that and would be you would be able to tr basically treat this like an original pro controller similar to this okay so obviously the difference here is this is basically like your Nintendo standard up to date you know new what they think is a professional controller this right here is more in the style of the, uh, the Nintendo GameCube which obviously i would like to think was you know made popular just in, in doing part by smash brothers and definitely mario kart i would say overall i i am very impressed i like this controller a lot more than the brand new nintendo uh, gamecube controller that they put out more or less just because of how it feels and the joke that goes around is that the new controllers definitely feel third party a lot of the things that people were are saying about the one that i'm talking about right now and i guess i'll just have it out for you guys to see so you guys know Know exactly what I'm talking about is that this one doesn't feel like this guy the argument here and a lot of things I see in my comments especially is that okay you're you're complaining about a new controller and how it feels and you haven't broken it in yet like I said I would follow up with you guys and not to take away from this review but I feel like it's really important to address all of these issues because at the end of it all, it's basically going to give you guys a better summary of how to go across the Powerray wireless GameCube controller. After a weekend of playing with this, and like I said, even though I joked about it in my video, I did say that I would play this. If, if I want to break this in faster, I'd play Melee, and that's exactly what I did. I actually had like five friends over. We played Melee for hours on Saturday. Sunday, we played more, and in addition to Melee, we did play Smash 4. So if you're going to use these kind of controllers on Smash 4, there really is no difference difference in feel especially considering with how tech is handled now as far as ultimate goes i'm pretty sure there's not going to be a tech heavy game like melee would be this guy right here it does not feel like that controller and the feel of a controller 
makes a big difference and it doesn't that, that has nothing to do with breaking in anything normally when you break in a controller it more or less has to do with how the buttons feel when you press down them and you know the sensitivity levels and and all that kind of stuff the new nintendo controller the matte finish and how the joystick felt made it feel very third party and this is why all of the complaints and why people are feel thinking like oh this thing feels like a third party controller however this guy doesn't feel third party at all it feels like it's an official product it feels like it is what it is and how they marketed it this thing is here to stay and i am proud to say that i am super impressed with this power Ray, you guys did an amazing job with this controller and i'm actually hella tight that i i, I don't have more because i would love to have that gray one the silver one and just all the all the colors because you know they have this in the classic Genku purple they have it in black they have it in silver they have it in gray and they even have a gold color which i don't even think the original Genku controller line had this is definitely a keeper and here is a bunch of more info that i might not have covered at the beginning of this video so like i said earlier this of course does also include a line of wired versions so if you wanted to go the wired route and not have to rely on going through batteries over time there is a wired version that does detach so i'm very briefly going to go over this while you guys look at all of these amazing pictures of this amazing controller so of course this is the preferred gamepad for the super smash brothers ultimate is coming up on december 7th at the time of this recording pre-orders are available now and the pre-orders uh, have been available since October 8th, and they will be available in late November. So price for the wireless controller is going to be $49.99, while the wired controller is going to be $24.99. Now, as far as international goes, that price may vary. This is for USD, guys, right here. Also, I just want to point out really quick that this guy is still significantly cheaper than this guy this is i think uh 70 bucks 80 dollars and this is a uh, 50 dollars so this is actually like a huge game changer especially for price if price is a big thing for you guys well <laughs> here you go it keeps the classic gamecube design plus a larger d-pad like i mentioned before and added the left shoulder button system buttons added for compatibility with a nintendo switch so they're talking about the home button and the capture button so we will be able to take snapshots and 30 second videos that the nintendo switch allows us to do and the, the officially licensed product with a two year Year limited warranty so that is awesome to know these are some key features for just the wireless and then i will briefly mention the wired key features as well so of course the bluetooth wireless freedom integrated mo motion controls leds for the power player number and low battery warning which is actually really uh, useful to know and then of course it includes two AA batteries for up to 30 hours of gameplay so if you're gonna have sessions i would definitely invest in rechargeables and have a separate charger so that way you can uh, charge your batteries so that way you can you know play you can charge them during your off session and the one thing that i will say that this controller does not have is a port so that you can just recharge the controller this controller literally is a wave bird 2.0 guys like just like the wave bird you have to replace the batteries i honestly don't mind replacing batteries on a controller like this especially if it feels as good as it does it's not heavy it's lightweight and the buttons all of it feels very good very natural and i'm very impressed with the d-pad as well and they were able to fit in the plus the minus the share and the home button right in the center here just comfortably it's wonderful i'm gonna zoom i'm gonna zoom in for you guys right here just so that you can see see it for yourselves as far as the wired controller goes the cool thing about that is the cable is actually detachable it's around 10 feet long so i know that for those that are fans of the 10 foot wire on that classic white controller that japan uh released that i did mention in my other video you'll be able to detach this and it does come with a velcro strap and obviously since this is wired is not going to require any kind of batteries these controllers will all of course be available at gamestop target best buy amazon walmart and other popular retailers across europe and latin america also available at powerade.com i hope i covered everything about this controller that there is to know i do wish that there was a way that i could play 
um, a Smash title on the Switch, but right now there is none whatsoever. I can't even do this on the, the Wii U if I wanted to try it on Smash 4, and this only works on Nintendo Switch. This is not a controller meant for PC use. Again, I am really happy with this controller. I'm really looking forward to playing this on Smash Ultimate and other Smash titles that they might include later on, hopefully on the Nintendo Switch. And that doesn't just mean I'm just trying to play Melee, dude. Have you ever played 64? That game is hella fun. Also, one thing I also forgot to mention at the beginning, the A button actually is a little bit bigger yeah, I feel it on my thumb, dude. That's crazy. I don't know if you guys can really see the difference right here, but the A button is uh, a little bit bigger, just like the D-pad. D-pad did get a, a, a significantly bigger, and as you may have known, since this is only a Bluetooth controller, this actually does not have any functionality with Amiibos or any kind of other wireless type of NFC connections. And that actually makes sense because this controller is pretty light, like I did say earlier before. And also, this is probably just another tidbit. This is only for Nintendo Switch. To my knowledge, this does not work on the PC. However, if there's anything out there that you guys discover that there's a way to connect this to the computer let me know i will gladly test that out in a later video and uh yeah so i'm pretty sure that about covers everything if this video is a little bit more on the longer side i apologize ahead of time but that was the complete review of power a's nintendo switch gamecube style controller of course only available for the nintendo switch this does come in plenty of other colors like i mentioned before and if there's anything that you guys want to know more about this controller I give it my stamp of approval. This is definitely a really good item to have for all Smashers or any GameCube enthusiasts. And especially with Black Friday coming up at the time of this recording and Christmas. Let's go, guys. Y'all know what to get your favorite gamers out there. Like, share, subscribe. Hit me up on Twitter. Let me know what you guys thought about in Discord, especially on my Discord. If you guys want to see more review content just like this, just in case situations like this where Power Ray, the company themselves, actually sent me this, if I can't actually get anything else sent to me from anyone else please consider becoming a patron today because obviously i will use that money to then go ahead and purchase whatever it is that you guys want me to review on the channel and with all that being said guys i've rambled enough i've said enough i've reviewed this enough it is what it is it's a controller it works great it's perfect and i'll see y'all